Sutton. <laughs> and welcome back to In the Can. Uh, we are right in the throes of Sundance 2011. And uh, here we have the director of Hot Coffee. And uh, it's not the delicious kind, it's more the painful kind. <laughs> Susan Saladoff is with us. Uh, and, and it really revolves around a story. I was very excited to talk to you, Susan, because uh, you know, we talked a little bit about this before we came on. Uh, but uh, I, I, I've been waiting for this story to be told. Thank you. And, and uh, you tell it in, in a very cool way where there's a lot of different angles to it. Uh, Hot Coffee, very quickly, before we start talking about your process and, and the film itself, uh, tell us about the idea, what Hot Coffee is, and what you're focusing on. Well, almost everybody knows about the case where the woman spilled coffee and sued McDonald's. Mm -hmm. But most people think that, oh, that's the biggest frivolous lawsuit ever, and mm -hmm. how can someone make money from spilling coffee? What they don't know is how many millions millions of dollars was spent in a public relations campaign mm -hmm. by large corporations to convince us as a nation of mm -hmm. just that. Because if we believe that and we give up our rights to access the court system, corporations make more money. Mm -hmm. And so that case was the poster child for uh, something called tort reform, mm -hmm. which is um, laws that were established to take people's rights away from them, mm -hmm. to take people's access to the courts away. And my film, documents four characters, they're four storylines, and each one is a different way that people are voluntarily giving up their rights to access the court system, mm -hmm. and they don't even know they're doing it. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say voluntarily being a parenthetical in a way, because I, it, it, there's, there's a couple things in life that people just don't understand uh, for the most part because it's just of the convoluted nature. L legality and law and, and, and court systems are one of them. Until they need it. Until they need Until it. Until it happens to them. And mm -hmm. then when they, it happens to them, then they go, wait, wait a second, I thought we lived in a democracy. I thought I could get I into thought, the court system. I thought, I thought, yeah, that's exactly right. And I, and I remember when this case came out and, and your first knee-jerk reaction is, is, oh, really? You know, a little hot coffee. Mm -hmm. How did you not know it was hot? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, people were making fun of it. There was a Seinfeld episode about it. Uh, was that really, what, I mean, did you feel like the corporations kind of looked at that natural knee-jerk reaction and said, wait a minute, we can we can actually extend this, we can make it make it mainstream thought? Well, what happened was is that there had been a, a public relations campaign that had actually started before this case before, came out. Okay. Um, there was an attempt to, um, it really was started by the tobacco industry, believe it or not, because they had made a product that was killing people. I actually do believe it. And <laughs> they needed to figure out a way to prevent people from getting into the system. Mm -hmm. And so they had developed, and they actually set up these front groups. Um, they were called Citizens Against Lawsuit Abuse Groups, mm -hmm. and people thought that they were just citizens groups that had popped up spontaneously when they had been manufactured by public relations campaigns by big corporations. And so that was all happening. And then this case came out, and they just went wild yeah. with it. And it became part of our popular culture, which is what we show in the movie. And then we show how much money was spent using the McDonald's coffee case and distorting the facts, mm -hmm. because the, the facts that most people think are not true at all. Yeah. If I were to ask you, what do you think? Was the woman driving? You'd say... Yes, yeah, right? right? She wasn't driving. She was a passenger in a parked car. Mm -hmm. The coffee was so hot that it caused third degree burns to her. Which is something you show in the film, by the way. We show, actually, we show the burns, which yeah. are, you know, there was, we premiered last night mm -hmm. and there was an audible gasp in yeah. the room. Well, it's because nobody had seen it before. I right. mean, that, that's the idea. It's, it's just perception thing. And, you know, it's, it's funny when you were talking about this Citizens Four thing. It's, so many, it's interesting how many uh, uh, special interest groups that are corporate backed call themselves Citizens Four or the People Four or something for America or mm -hmm. something like that, which automatically makes you think it's a grassroots neighborhood sign holding type of organization when really it's as special interest as it comes. Right, and we don't we can always know that. Right, and uh, even like commercials, like on television, you know, you th for like during campaigns, we don't know who's paying for those commercials. And with the new Citizens Unit, well, a year ago, the Citizens United case that came out in the U.S. Supreme Court, mm -hmm. it gave corporations unfettered um, liberties to put at how much money they want into campaigns and not tell us where that money. Came exactly. From. Yeah. Right. Well, let's talk about your process here. Obviously, this is something you are very uh, involved with. You do have an extensive legal background. You yes, were I, a lawyer. I, well, I'm still, I'm still a lawyer. Are, yeah, you're still bar <laughs> Not certified. Not practicing, but I'm still a lawyer. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so, so you you bring an interesting aspect to it too, as a filmmaker, but also as someone who is very versed in the in the legality of of, of some of the language that we're talking about here. You were talking about uh, coming to Sundance a couple of years ago, uh, which kind of started, you know, spawned this idea. Tell me a little bit about well, that. Well. 
I decided to take a year off from my practice. I was going to take a one-year sabbatical. You got burned out by law. Well, it was just, you know, 25 years <laughs> is a long time. Yeah, and I just decided I wanted to do something else for a year. And everybody said, oh, you're going to travel. And I said, no, if I'm going to take a year off, I have to do something. Right. And so I had this idea. And I watched a lot of documentaries. And I knew that you could tell a story through film. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I'm going to tell the story that I know, that nobody knows. I've been waiting for somebody else to make this movie. And nobody did. So I said, you know what? I'm going to make this movie. So I wrote an outline, and I came to Sundance in 2009 and watched as many documentaries as I could mm -hmm. to see what worked. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't taken one frame yet. I hadn't done anything. And I just learned. And then I came, and I raised the money. I had to raise all the money for this film myself. Mm -hmm. And then we finished. We went into production. We finished production at uh, the end of 2009. I came back to Sundance in 2010 uh -huh. to visualize being here in 2011. Okay, good. I said, I'm just going to come and get the lay of the land because when I'm there in 2011, I, I'll feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And here, here I am, are. which is just unbelievable. Fantastic. And it's been a good experience so far. It's been fabulous. Good. And we'll talk about the premiere last night, but I know that we do have a clip. Okay. Uh, you brought one. Uh, right. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to see here. Um, I think that this clip is basically how the McDonald's case was distorted by the media, how it started to be newspaper article, newspaper article, mm -hmm. one after another, when this case came out and was just sensationalized. And I think that's what you're going to see. All right. Here's a little hot coffee. Even though the amount was reduced later, I think the initial award certainly got everybody's attention, not necessarily in a favorable way. I sued Starbucks because I spilled a frappuccino in my lap and it was cold. I'm going to sue, sue, yes, I'm going to sue, sue, sue. The media in corporate America turned a disadvantage into an advantage, an extreme advantage as to how they dealt with this case and its aftermath. I mean, Mrs. Liebeck became a joke. The jury function became a joke, notwithstanding the fact that we had 12 good, hardworking New Mexico citizens on that jury, and it was a unanimous verdict. But they did a masterful job of taking this this simple verdict and turning it upside down as though people like Mrs. Liebeck are trying to take economic advantage of, of the whole legal system. That's a pretty, yeah, it's a good look into uh, to the humanity of it a little mm -hmm. bit. I mean, when you, when you talk about jurors and people and, and attitudes and, and how easy it is to put just enough of a spin on something. Yeah, I mean, there were, there were 12 people sitting on this jury. It was unanimous. Mm -hmm. I mean, in fact, the jurors, we have two jurors in the, um, in, uh, in the movie, and they said there wasn't even a discussion about liability. It was just how much. She was found 20% at fault. But the reason that they found McDonald so much at fault yeah. was because they had over 700 claims before this one that they paid out for burns And that's of their admissible? Hospital. Oh, yeah. In fact, they put it on into evidence themselves because they thought it was a trivial amount of uh, a number so of So many cases. people did it that obviously it couldn't have been something. Yeah, but you know what was funny about that? The lawyer who was representing Mrs. Liebeck uh -huh. had also represented another person previously who had been burned, and that name wasn't on the list. So he said in cross-examination, now, Mr. McDonald's person, where's Mrs. So-and-so? Why mm -hmm. isn't she on the list? Mm -hmm. And he goes, well, I don't know. Well, how many other people aren't on the list that were burned? Mm -hmm. And the jury just got really angry. Yeah. Well, and expectedly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Why? You know, it's funny, and, and uh, you know, you take something like this, which you know, the, the man in the, the clip mentioned this. You know, something as simple, a simple verdict, so to speak, but how emotionally charged it mm -hmm. can get when you have expert spin kind of infused into it yeah. a little bit too. It's amazing how many people have such strong feelings about this topic. Yeah, and they didn't even know they had it until they until you start revving up the juices a little bit and you right. show them some things and, and things like that. And I think and I hope that this film will open their minds. I tell people all the time, I'm not trying to change anybody's mind. I just want to open people's minds. Well, that's but what there's a good another side of the story. That's, that's what a documentary does. You're not trying to tell them what to think. You're just giving them a palette to think right. from. And it's yeah. such an important topic that mm -hmm. people should understand their rights. And so I hope when they see this film that they'll at least have a better understanding when they go to the ballot box mm -hmm. or when they're being asked to vote on these issues or be a juror, mm -hmm. what it means to, to them personally um, when this kind of propaganda is used. Well, there's no better stage than Sundance. Glad you're here. Thank you so and, much. Uh, w and good luck with the film. Thank you. I know you had a great premiere last night, yeah. Susan Saladoff. And uh, hopefully we'll see more of you in the years to come as new ideas come and you start to visualize being here more yes, often. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> we'll be back with more in the can after this. Stay tuned.